Good afternoon to you all. My name is Manuel Firmino and you are all welcome to the ninth Creativity Talk. This initiative was started by the Department of Informatics Engineering of the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto uh, and organized with the faculties of Fine Arts, Humanities, Psychology and Educational Sciences and of course other institutions. So we expect these talks to cover several scientific and artistic areas discussing and studying creativity, helping to promote a proactive attitude in our students and in general in our lives. Each talk will also figure a guest moderator that will in his turn present our keynote speaker, which we are very honored to have today, professor and researcher Peter Childs. Our moderator is George Lino Walsh, mechanical engineer with a PhD in material science and associate professor at Phil. He is the field director of the Master at, uh, in Product and Industrial Design, director of Design Studio Philp and Laboratory of Additive Manufacturing, and also president of the Portuguese Society of Materials. He developed a research in product development and additive manufacturing, co-author of five books and more than 500 papers in journals, book chapters, posters, and conferences. Uh, he has a registration in of uh, community design or model and 25 awards in competitions, reviewer of several scientific journals, and is director of science and materials technology magazine. Thank you, Professor Giorgino, and the word is yours. Thank you, Manuel Firmino, for your kind introduction. And uh, it's uh, a pleasure for me to, to be here today with, with you in this ninth session of Creative Talks. And we have uh, today a keynote speaker that is the Distinguished professional, Professorial Lead in Engineer Design and Co-Director of Energy Futures Lab at Imperial College in London, Peter Childs on the Creativity Diamond Framework. Peter Childs has a general interest include creativity, innovation, design, sustainability, and robotics. He was the founding head of school for the Dyson School of Design Engineer at Imperial. And the prior roles include director of the Rolls-Royce supported University Technology Center for Aerothermal System, director of Incubate and professor at the University of Success. He has contributed to over 200 refereed journal and conference papers and several books. He has been principal or co-instigator on contracts totaling over 100 million dollar, um, pounds. He's a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, editor of the Journal of Power and Energy, professor of excellence at MDH Berlin, advisor professor at Guangdong University of Technology, chairperson at Blade Pug Limited and founder director and chairperson at Keyboat Limited. I'm sure that he also he will also give us some details about all these uh, tasks that he has been enrolled. So Professor Peter Shiles, floor is yours. And thank you again for your availability to share with us your great knowledge about uh, this subject. Thank you. Professor Pals, thank you ever so much. And thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to do this presentation and to engage with the audience. Um, I am going to present, I have some slides, lots of images and lots of provocations. And we're going to talk about creativity and creativity is delightful because we're all good at it. All seven billion of us on this earth are creative and we're all good at it. We practice it all the time. And I'm just going to really spend um, half an hour to 40 minutes talking about ways to add to our natural or innate creativity. So thank you very much indeed for that uh, introduction to uh, some of the successes in my life. Of course, like everyone, I make mistakes. And um, uh, if you were to chat to my friends and family, they would they would give a very different list. Rather than your successes, they'd probably say all the silly things one does on a daily basis. Um, but thank you for those kind words. 
So let's kick off the presentation and get ourselves going. So hopefully the organizers will tell me that this is um, going well and your screen should have turned black and green with a good QR code in the middle. The QR code should work, they sort of jump you to a website or a paper or something like that. I will make the PDF available to the organizers and I'm perfectly happy for that to be distributed to, uh, to the audience accordingly, should they so wish. <clears throat> so as an agenda, I'm uh, going to just run through a little bit of context, um, you know, my background, and talk about creativity, talk about creativity research, the cognitive process, tools for creativity, and then a framework which has arisen from research, which we think is helpful. So the aim is to be helpful. It's open access. So uh, there will be links to this and you are welcome to access those. And there are lots of tools which go with it and then pull things together. Professor Fowles kindly gave an introduction. I won't repeat it. Um, so you know, I love being a professor. I've been a professor for about 20 years and um, thoroughly enjoy the world of academia. But alongside academia, I've tended to do enterprises and engage in entrepreneurial activity as well. And so I've helped start up a dozen or so companies. But over the last 14 or 15 years, I've been engaged in advising and mentoring companies typically associated with the Royal College of Art and Imperial College London, but other universities and organizations as well. And so I've had the delight of actually mentoring and advising um, between 200 and 300 companies, in fact. One of the challenges with being a professor is, do you know what you're talking about? And it's easy for us to be so busy researching and teaching and that, that we don't practice anymore. And in my world, I do actually like designing. I may not be, in fact, I will say it, I am not the best designer in the world. I like engineering. I will not be the best engineer. I enjoy engaging in entrepreneurial activities and, and uh, helping businesses. Am I the best business person? We'll let you be the judge of that, but I would question that myself. But I have engaged with a few businesses and you can see some of these listed here. Um, so we will briefly talk about QBot Limited and Blaybug Limited, but I, uh, I enjoy practicing as well as researching, as well as teaching, as well as helping universities operate. The school I'm in is the Dyson School of Design Engineering. It's quite new. We set it up 10 years ago, and that's our building in the bottom right. And just like every university, we're engaged really with producing or helping to nurture the innovators, change makers, and new knowledge of tomorrow. And we do this through the domain that we call design engineering, which we view as the fusion of design thinking engineering thinking and practice within a culture of innovation and enterprise. And you're going to get a flavor of that as I just go through this presentation. Ideas are great. We'll talk about creativity. The ability to imagine or invent something new of value is a typical definition for creativity. So you have creativity. We also have the world of innovation, and innovation can be regarded as the realization of value from creativity. You could say ideas to reality. So I'm just going to show you some images of ideas that have made it in commercial form. It's not the only way that ideas can become real, but it's one of them. So this is safety net, um, perhaps a technology very relevant to our host from Portugal. Um, uh, you attach a number of these to a trawler net and through light emissions and audio emissions, they 
they help target the target species and um, uh, reduce catching of unwanted species. And in that way, when you haul your nets up, you have your target species in the nets. The other uh, species have either been let through or repelled away from um, being caught. So you are not damaging the fish stocks in the same way. And uh, you know, to me, this is a very impressive um, it, fusion of design and engineering and the realization of ideas through innovation. Not everything we engage with is physical. Um, Govin Balakshan, one of our former students, um, helped set up Curio and Curio, an app, allowing users to consume high-end audio content on the move. The insight was that we're busy on the, maybe on the Metro, we've got a 10 minute journey. We want to listen in on something, very quickly get to the good stuff and Curio helps us do that. Many of you will have grandparents, um, great grandparents perhaps, who one day, or who, who do have dementia or may one day develop dementia. And one of the challenges with dementia patients is, is um, water consumption. If you give them a cup, maybe they spill it. If you give them a beaker, maybe they shake it and everybody gets wet. Um, and if you don't consume enough water, maybe you get angry. So um, the team here, uh, Lewis Hornby, Nick Houghton, Claudia Arnold, uh, again, former um, master's students now running their business, um, developed these hydration droplets. And it was just clever, clever materials, clever thinking, clever user engagement. But it, the first prototypes, putting this box that looked attractive in front of somebody and without even explaining it, the person with dementia seemed to just open the box and start consuming. We, we just called it the chocolate box memory kicking in, the notion of, you know, looks, looks good, let's, let's eat these. So people naturally getting hydration and jelly drops have now moved on to develop a whole host of products and enable people to access these hydration droplets very conveniently. You, you could get a month's supply for your loved one or the person you're caring for. Color was so important here. Um, suppose you're, uh, the person you're caring for picks orange. You can then tell a story about orange. The next day, maybe they pick green first, then you can tell a different story about green. So it gives the carer something to speak about. Some of you will have seen Petit Plea. They've had lots of exposure over the years. The notion of high quality fabrics that can expand with, your, with you as you grow, um, originally intended for very young children. And you'll see some great video and great footage of their clothing range. Lucy Young and her team, um, Charco Neurotech, did a beat device for um, helping Parkinson's sufferers enhance their mobility, just this beat and associated um, engagement is enough to help um, with mobility. Does not cure Parkinson's, but it really enhances quality of life. I've deliberately picked examples which are a mix because I know there is a diverse um, audience. Gravity Sketch are doing contemporary computer-aided design. You know, we're all used to screens and mice for controlling our computer-aided design packages. But that's very 20th century, let's face it. Times have moved on. And Gravity Sketch is this amazing tool where the use, through the use of gesture and your headsets, you're able to generate geometry very swiftly with high precision. And it has become um, the go-to CAD package for the automotive industry and a good chunk of film industry. And then a couple of companies I'm engaged with. Um, Bladebug do inspection, repair, and maintenance robots for offshore wind turbines. 
the the graphic on the left hand side and that robot does exist but it's a graphic um uh, looks very fancy and the robot looks quite big but on the right hand side you can see the real robot on the blade and um the robot's just 60 centimeters long 60 centimeters wide it's like a giant insect it crawls all over the blades but these blades are 100 meters long so it's a tiny speck on the blade very impressive technology another robot so blade bug is about sustainable or renewable energy supply a topic i believe is important cubot is about reducing the need for energy so using these robots which you feed underneath the house and they will spray two-part material on the underside of your suspended timber or concrete flooring to really improve the thermal performance that reduces the amount of heating you need or the amount of air conditioning that you might use. So just some examples. So just to talk about the context, and I've alluded to this already, I believe we're all creative, whether your IQ is 80 or 135. Um, you may be aware that there is research which indicates that very high IQ levels, you still have creativity, but it may actually drop off. Be careful when you boast about your IQ being 138. Anyway, I'm um, of the view, and I, will, I can provide lots of evidence for this, that I will boldly say that you are creative. And I suggest that creativity is important. Our world needs creativity. We need good ideas. And I don't need to tell us or tell you that we live in a challenging and changing world. Because it's changing, we need new ideas. So we've sorted context. I will now just move on to creativity. A definition I've said already. One of many, there are 80 or so common academic definitions for creativity. And um, uh, another definition, just as I hold here, creativity could be regarded as imagination with responsibility, something Sai Rai Kung said about 10 years ago. Some ideas are amazing and brilliant. Others are just simple good ideas where you know, they add value in some way. So I've got um, just three rhetorical questions for the audience. Just think about these. When do you get ideas? Where do you get ideas? How do you get ideas? I'm, I'm, I'm an Englishman, so of course, English breakfast tea, it's that time of day. And um, so when do you get ideas? Where do you get ideas? How do you get ideas? Perhaps you thought, well, in bed, you know, going to sleep or middle of the night or waking up in that waking moment. Perhaps you thought in the shower or the bath, very common. Perhaps you thought on the bus or traveling. Maybe you thought during boring lectures by Peter Childs or boring meetings. These are known as the bees of creativity and works in the English language, may not work in Portuguese, um, but I'm sure you can uh, uh, develop an equivalent list. I shall get them all up. There's one more um, on the toilet, English slang. And there is something that is common between these, and you can pick this up in the neuroscience research findings over the last 30 or 40 years, or in the psychology um, of the uh, 20th century, that creativity occurs and at, at a higher level when we are relaxed. So the common characteristic of these um, moments, if you wish, is that they are associated with increased levels of relaxation. Concentration is great and important in life, but it's particularly good for getting things done that you know how to do. But associated with concentration is a slight or 
maybe a little bit more profound reduction in your creativity in comparison to when you're relaxed. So that common advice for when you want ideas, go for a walk in the park, go for a walk along the seaside, you know, uh, take a break. There is neuroscience and psychology behind that good advice. Okay. Whilst we're talking about good advice, I just wanted to pick up upon the traditional inventor approach. And I'm just going to say that it's as valid now as it ever was. And here I'm featuring the work of Neil Barron. He's the CEO of Lightlock. You can look them up if you wish. They do this high-end bicycle lock, bicycle lock uh, resistant to grinder wheels, resistant to uh, um, picking, resistant to um, uh, cropping, bulk cropping. And you can see you know, Neil does do sketches. These are his sketches at the top. He sketches at his desk. Um, he has all sorts of materials and artifacts on his desk, bits of wire and bits of metal and bits of fabric. Um, so he sketches, he evaluates ideas, he does some calculations. And if he doesn't like what he's got, he goes back and repeats the, repeats the sketches and calculations, makes some changes until he's happy. And then um, may well then pass that on to colleagues for further elaboration and development. But this traditional inventor approach is as valid now as ever was. Of course, over the last, well, since the 1970s, we've seen the rise of design thinking. This is Damien Newman's design squiggle showing the sort of meandering and chaotic um, uh, searching and looking for material and information towards the start of a project, gradually converging towards a concept. And then you've made your, you've picked your dominant idea and then are doing detailed design, elaboration and development of that idea. We are in the 21st century, so this is work from working with big OEMs and as well as SMEs, re-evaluating the traditional V diagram, das V diagram from Germany from the 1980s, which is the dominant um, process within the project management um, software, which many of us use. But this work skewed the V diagram, recognizing that the amount of effort you put in to tasks towards the um, yeah, at certain phases, yeah, after the initial phases, is substantially more to the amount of person months you might put in to requirements analysis or specification or conceptual design. Conceptual design may actually be six person weeks, but acceptance testing might be a thousand person weeks. Production release planning might be 2000 person weeks effort. And just so that grade zone on the, uh, around the central black V is indicating increased effort associated with subsequent phases. So just a contemporary approach to idea development, if you wish, and realization. The title of this talk was The Creativity Diamond. In essence, and I'm showing you here the original graphic, um, I'm not the world's best, best graphic designer, and indeed um, on the second or third slide was a much better attempt at the Creativity Diamond by Nacho Villanova. Um, anyway, this was the original Creativity Diamond framework graphic. A single graphic trying to prompt the user that there are a variety of approaches to generating ideas, which you might want to consider when you're diverging or when you're converging. We'll come back to this, but I just wanted to suggest that things like the traditional inventor approach are great. We've been through a few decades of the value of design thinking, we, are, we regularly use within nearly all our industries um, project management software um, for guiding process, which is associated with DASV diagram. Um, 
I've shown you a contemporary interpretation of the V diagram, the skewed V diagram. And now I'm introducing to you something that we'll look at later in the session around a framework to add to your capabilities in creativity. We think creativity exists on at least two levels, big C creativity, eminent, versus little c, everyday creativity. That was Maggie Bowden's work, um, which she published um, about 20 years ago. We can also view creativity in terms of brilliance, personal creativity, pa paradigm or domain shifting creativity, or the kind of creativity that I encourage or live within, this notion that you're working with a team, you need ideas, you're in a company, you're doing the next phase of development. Um, so I, I regard that as forced or industrial creativity. Perhaps you're being paid for it. The notions of creative contribution has been ex extended by James Kaufman and his team to mini, little, pro and big C creativity. There are links to these. Of course, we are in the 21st century. So what about the uh, rise of machine learning and AI um, approaches? This is B-Link. Um, if you follow the QR code and enter your email, then you can access this. And it, based upon a word which you've put in here, we put in thermal insulation, it then produces what looks like a mind map in front of you. It takes a few seconds, that's deliberate, so you can follow and, and look around. Um, and what this is just doing is, data mining a few million um, journal papers um, to look at links and connections. And there are sort of more sophisticated ways you can use this tool, looking at links between two disparate um, comments. So I, I think here in the example, they're adding in another phrase, uh, circular economy, and that will come out and then linking across between circular economy and, and thermal insulation. So that is B-Link. And it's something that you can have a go with. This came out um, five or six years ago. And um, another tool that's just come out is called Wikilink, exploiting Wikipedia and all that knowledge base there, um, but using waiting to capture implicit connections between nodes and algorithms to enable creative provocations. Again, this is a tool. Um, we published this. You can have a go with it. So. Uh, do check these out if they're of interest. I've been a proponent of sketching for many years and um, you know, designers who can sketch can communicate their ideas very quickly. Engineers who choose to learn to sketch, and many do, um, find that they um, enjoy and value and find value in that communication between the developing idea through the medium of the pencil and arm and what they're seeing and the, the ability to make changes. So sketching is important. Pan Wong, um, in her work, she popped on sort of 64 and then 128 EEG sensors, made her subjects watch 6,000 images, monitoring the subcranial um, electrical signals in order to develop you know, um, terabyte sized um, data sets, apply machine learning to correlate between what the subject was looking at and um, those electrical signals. And what you're seeing here is early output from this work. Um, asking the subject, for example, to imagine the handbag they might want to give um, their mother at Christmas. Uh, you can see the outcome is pixelated. It's slightly blurry. Uh, asking the subject to imagine headphones. So this is after the training, We've taken the headset off, subsequently got the subject back in um, to imagine something. But you know, those are well, perhaps you might say they're recognizable headphones. Not so good at the kettle, not so good at the watch. The last column was um, a guitar, and maybe you can say, well, it's recognizable. So this was to us encouraging. We then moved to 128 nodes, and it was that much better, especially with refinement of the technique. So very exciting work. 
So do we need to sketch when you can just imagine and output through some brain machine interface? I'll leave that one for you to explore. I've had the delight, just like many professors, of supervising a lot of PhDs. And um, they've been on diverse topics. You can see the list here. And they've offered a significant understanding for me of divergent and convergent phases in creativity. And I just want to pick up upon some work, some of our own, that of other authors on cognitive process. And this will be quite brief. You can follow the references if you so wish. But if we look at some of the cognitive processes associated with creativity, there's, um, you can see in this top graphic, a degree of cognitive control you know, um, spanning between incubation through metaphorical and analogical thinking towards ideational fluency and perspective thinking, or, you know, broadly between generation and exploration. And this last bullet point, that if you look at some of the features and facets in creativity in the models, they include phasing, incubation, perspective, use of analogy and metaphor, association and exploration, stimulation, convergence and divergence, sequencing, attention and evaluation. And we all had our own lockdown experiences. In a chunk, in quite a large chunk of time, um, bound to my home in Brighton, for whatever reason, I chose, I, I was just thinking about one of the old PhD theses. So I picked it up, you know, reading about creativity and the creativity research. The thought was, oh, I remember that student they did look at a particular subject, of course, but I thought that wasn't their principal conclusion. I thought, did we miss something? You know, did we realize something, but actually missed it in our principal outcome of the thesis? And there was something there, but it, it just made me read the thesis again, the whole thing. And I thought, ah, did we miss things in other PhD studies? So I started reading all 20. And I did actually read all 20 theses, making notes as we went through. And it was that work which led to the creativity diamond. There are many tools which you will know, various types of brainstorming, you know, sticky note, list brainstorming, alphabet brainstorming, grid brainstorming, many different forms of thinking style, matrix and, or systematic approaches such as morphological analysis. Many engineers use this. Um, again, engineers often learn TRIZ, um, perhaps with its contradiction matrix for resolving um, conflicts between parameters. Scamper, I'll talk about that in a moment. This is just a monomic or a set of provocations for stimulating ideas. One of the powerful approaches in creativity, the use of analogy and metaphor. And then, of course, augmented AI approaches. So many creativity tools, and I've gathered or rather I should say PhDs and postdocs and teams have uh, gathered uh, about 1,200 to 1,500 of these in our own research on creativity and looking at the validation or otherwise of these approaches. But let's just look at Scamper, uh, just a run through um, for your uh, interest. So the S in, in Scamper stands for substitution. You can see an example here, substitute the gold tooth, certainly. Uh, Intriguing, perhaps. Com combining, you may be familiar with the traditional uh, combination of these elements, if you wish, earth, wind, fire, and water. In this uh, story by the, by the students from Remedy Ha, um, the characters of earth, wind, and fire got fed up with each other, went their separate ways, and the, uh, uh, the, the story is about their adventures separately and uh, uh, Spoiler alert, you know, do they come back together again or not at the end? Adaptation. Um, in this video, the team delightfully changed the perspective. So you know, normally you're looking at the character um, and you know, the character has autonomy, but here 
um, partway through, the character suddenly realizes that they that he has no autonomy and asks the question, "Hang on a minute, what are you? You're doing this to me. Are you doing this?" And uh, adapting the perspective. In fashion, a common um, intervention is to it is to magnify something. Um, make it dis disproportionate. And you can see this is done on the cuffs to uh, certainly provocative effect. Can we put something to another use? Many fashion designers have used string and strands um, within, within uh, fashion. The E in scamper stands for erase or eradicate. And with um, clever lighting and use of materials and effect, um, the team here, Sarah, um, very cleverly made a chunk of the body almost disappear. So the head and the feet were very much um, prominent. And then the R in scamper is for reverse or rearrange. And um, if you watch the video, if you, initially the box is neatly filled with these um, large spheres, but they gradually emerge out. If nothing else, it's interesting and intriguing. So that's one creativity tool. Others are very different. Morphological analysis is a more systematic approach, a matrix of options, and you pick in the tool one item from each row and then blend them together, synthesize them together to create an idea, so combinational creativity. I won't go through these, just saying that software is available. Let's go to the Creativity Diamond Framework. It's a guide. It embodies the notion of divergence and convergence. In divergence, you generate many ideas. And then in convergence, you look at those ideas, evaluate them, maybe elaborate upon them, resolve some problems associated with them, and select ultimately one or a few for further consideration and development. Within my poor graphic here, um, the letters in the middle are just standing for uh, uh, well, uh, for some of the different approaches in creativity, and the decode is on the right hand side. So MA is morphological analysis, POI is principles of innovation, AR is analogical reasoning, and so forth. And the notion of the single graphic is to present to you through that faceted shape in the middle um a set of standard approaches to idea generation to add to your natural creativity maybe you've got your 20 ideas already in your notebook or sketches um and you're then thinking hang on a minute is there something else out there maybe i should use um one of these approaches to generate a whole set of additional ideas so that i've got a bigger idea pool within the framework and the links will take you there, as I say, it's um, from an open source paper, um, open access paper. We've given short descriptions of some of the different approaches along with the merits. We've also given some guidance as to whether the approach is good for somebody working on their own or in a group, whether the approach is extrovert aligned, introvert aligned. Is it suitable for small or big C creativity? How long is it going to take? What's the difficulty level? Is there an AI version readily available? I'm expecting the right-hand column to fill in, so this will date very quickly. So perhaps during divergence, you might use, you might spend a few hours on morphological analysis, a couple of hours exploring the principles of innovation, a few hours or a day exploring the use of metaphor, maybe a day exploring design thinking to generate a lot of ideas. Then perhaps through convergence, you will spend a while looking at the ideas you've generated, but using perhaps a, a, an aspect of brainstorming. And then using a, uh, looking at those ideas using critical thinking, looking at that set of ideas using analogical reasoning. And then um, maybe you find one of the ideas and there may be some opportunity you realize and you think, ah, oh, metaphor might be good for that. 
as well as um, the graphics, the tables, we've been producing cards to go with this. This is a set in English language and Chinese. So it's a set of 23 cards, um, just um, explaining the different tools. And um, uh, yeah, we got just run through each of the tools. This is a scan for the one that we just considered. One of the reasoning approaches, but there are also cards for the different thinking approaches. If you're wanting more, um, you could always pick up upon the creative thinking techniques and tools for success course, which is available on Coursera and edX. Um, so uh, these are um, on one of the platforms, it's free unless you want the certificate, um, in which case you might have to pay your $50 or whatever is the price point. So do check that out, check that out if that's of interest. So my last slides. Um, I've hopefully introduced the creativity diamond to you. Single graphic, really provoking, um, hopefully, that there's a set of approaches you could employ during divergence and convergence. And it's arisen from a lot of work. Um, you know, a PhD, what is it? Four years of somebody's life. Um, they will have reviewed other people's work, they will have pioneered a specific area, and we've absolutely exploited that by revisiting those 20 PhDs, looking at their final conclusions, but also looking at their discoveries en route, and found it to be a very rich source, which um, enabled us to pull together the, the creativity diamond. So I suppose I will just conclude by recommending it to you or commending it to you for your consideration. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes what I have to say. I shall stop sharing and hand back to our, our colleagues in Portugal. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, very interesting presentation. I think that uh, the, especially the, these last slides, we could spend hours talking about all the about all these tools. How, how can we implement them and discuss discuss some some of, of these interesting tools in this in your diamond? 